Hi, and welcome back to Beans and Bezels. A few months ago, I reviewed the Christopher Ward Dartmouth, and I was blown away by the overall quality and finishing being delivered, as well as the quality of the components and specs. That continues to be one of my favorite dive watches in the $1,000 category, and I'm convinced that Christopher Ward are one of the best micro brands out there today. They recently released the first real super compressor dive watch in a couple of decades, and I've been itching to get my hands on one of these watches since release. I finally get to check out the C65 Super Compressor in Ocean Blue, which has a retail price of around $1,025, but you can almost always find a 15% discount code, bringing these prices down to about $875 on a leather or rubber strap. Let's check it out. I measured the case to be 40.5mm in diameter, 46.5mm from lug to lug, and 13mm in height. The case is very well designed and manufactured, combining carefully chosen brushed and polished elements that once again prove to me that Christopher Ward is one of the best micro brands out there today. The case extends and curves downwards into a pair of short and sharp lugs with polished edges. The lug width is 22mm and is not drilled through. There is a polished fixed bezel section that seats a domed sapphire crystal, which has some distortion at the edges, but not enough to hurt legibility. The super compressor layout results in two 6.3mm crowns, with only the primary crown being screwed down. The crown action is good, but I did notice a bit of crown wobble here. Flipping it over, you have a screw down exhibition case pack, which gives you a glimpse of the super compressor ring beneath the case pack. The compression spring allows the watch to maintain its water rating even under high pressure, following the original design spec from over 50 years ago. This watch is rated for up to 150 meters of water resistance. This watch is offered in three different dial options, and this is the Ocean Blue, my favorite of the three. You have an inner rotating bezel that is lightly media blasted with a painted white surface and dark blue printed numerals and markers. There is a loomed orange triangular element at the 12 o'clock position. The inner rotating bezel does click into place and is unidirectional. The actual dial surface has a sunburst texture and is very well finished and very clean. There is an outer seconds and minute track that makes use of short printed white ticks and large printed white ticks for the seconds and minutes respectively. There's a loomed circular pips for each increment of five which also serve as hour markers. You then have multifaceted hour indices that have loomed fill tips. The finishing on these indices is excellent and is telling of Christopher Ward's ability to do good work in the finishing department. The brand's logo is printed under the 12 o'clock and the quality of printing is great again. Above the 6 o'clock and printed in orange are two words that have caused quite a bit of fuss since this watch was released, and for good reason. The super compressor text appears to be left aligned instead of center aligned, and it baffles me how this was even allowed to occur. Did nobody notice this, or did they notice it and decide not to do anything about it? A dial like this isn't the most expensive element on this watch and would have been a relatively inexpensive problem to fix. I know most folks aren't bothered by this, and good on them for not taking this silly hobby too seriously. But I cannot put my money into a product that is obviously flawed. And while I absolutely love every other aspect of this watch, I won't be putting my money here until they fix this. However, those interested in the more recent deep blue dial option should be relieved to know that the problem has been addressed there. The handset is interesting too, with that typical brushed and polished hour hand, but a painted orange minute hand to continue the orange accents across the dial. The finishing on these hands are excellent. The second hand has a loomed element and has painted orange accents at the tip. The counterweight is shaped like a trident, continuing the brand's design identity. All the loomed elements are grade X1 GL C1 Super Luminova, and they glow bright and hold their charge well. The loom design is a bit restrained, with only the hour pips and index tips being loomed on the dial. The inner rotating bezel only has a loom triangle element at the 12 o'clock. The hands are very generously loomed, seconds hand included. The hands have excellent brightness and longevity. This watch uses a Solita SW200-1, a movement that we are all quite familiar with by now. Unlike the Dartmouth that I previously reviewed, this movement is not chronometer grade, but considering that this watch aims to deliver more clever engineering and design than the Dartmouth at around the same price, I think this is alright. On my time grapher, I measured roughly plus 13 seconds per day in the dial-up position and plus 13 seconds per day in the crown-up position. I think this could be regulated better, but this watch has exchanged hands a few times already. The movement is visible through the exhibition case pack and is fairly clean, indicating good quality control standards. The movement has a custom engraved rotor for Christopher Ward and the movement looks alright with some basic finishing across the components. Given the somewhat extended case pack, I was a bit worried about comfort on the wrist and overall case balance, 
but this watch was a pleasant surprise and fits great on my six and a quarter inch wrist. The 46.5 mm lug to lug with along with the cleverly crafted lug design makes this watch very easy to wear. The 13 mm height wears taller than the Dartmouth, but a lot of that height is the fixed bezel and protruding crystals, so the watch feels a lot shorter on the wrist. Overall, I have no complaints about the wrist presence, although I will say that the Dartmouth feels a lot sleeker. That said, this watch wears better than most 13mm tall divers that I've reviewed. To wrap this up quickly, if you can look past the lazy and inexcusable printing error on the dial, everything else about this watch is beyond impressive. The design, the build quality and the finishing are a class apart from most other micro brands in this category. And I can't really think of too many micro brands that can compete with the value being delivered here. Personally, knowing that this dial error is going to be fixed soon, I wouldn't buy one yet. But once you hear confirmation that the silly issue has been rectified, as they have with the blue, deep blue dial, I say throw your money at Christopher Ward and you're not going to be disappointed. And if you can afford the extra money for the bracelet, I highly recommend it. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to read my other reviews in the link below.